Hi everyone. Hi everyone. How are you? Hope everyone is good. <laughs> I think today is 10th of January 2022. You are welcome to another live program. My name is Comrade Pralegian. Olayemi Akimumi from Pralag International. People ask me, what is Pralag International? Pralag International is just an acronym of Prisons Rehabilitation and Law Abiding Organization International, Ecotan in United States of America. The organization is also registered in Nigeria. We have over 15,000 members caught across the world. Let's say volunteers call across across the world. What do we do? Pralag International is all about human rights advocacy. That's number one. Number two, alternative dispute resolution. That's number two. Three, we empower the uh, prison inmates, homeless, and all vulnerable people in the society so that they will not be frustrated and go into crime. If they go into crime, they will make our world a, um, a situation. It will affect me and you. I'm not a criminal. My children are not criminal, but Anytime crime is perpetrated, it's perpetrated against innocent people too. So it is better we protect the good people from vulnerable people so that they won't perpetrate evil against the good people. We enlighten people. The main reason I'm here, the main reason you are hearing me, the main reason you are hearing me is because I want to enlighten. I want, if I bring in cases to you, number one, you will learn from it. And then it we will want to protect the reoccurrence of that, pro, of that problem. Then at the end of the day, all of us will be able to bring peace to our society. Then we do rehabilitation of, of ex inmates. If you don't do that, <laughs> they will go back to crime. And then there will be a problem. Now, we have different ways our law enforcement in Nigeria turns innocent citizens into criminal. They are not interested in the people that have been to prison and coming back. Most of the time when you report uh, a case against someone that have been to prison, they say, oh, this one is a criminal. They're looking for innocent ones, the ones that are still fragile. The one that are still afraid, you know why? That is the youth fear. The immigration, I still have cases, very terrible one. And I'm still going to tell you. Ha, you have not heard anything about immigration. People are sending cases to me, what they have sent. And because they use fear, so anywhere there's a fear, there becomes a problem. Oh, that's ray of light. Uh, what do I do? No problem. If it's not bothering you. So, the youth fear. Anywhere there's a fear in Nigeria, money will come out. Number one, fear that I'm going to lose my flight. That's number one fear. You want to bring him money, and there are a lot of people that they've done that too. Police will use fear of from the road. They will use fear of you want i will delay you i can delay you i can send you i can rope you i can do this you go to prison you don't want to go to prison so money will come the issue of a uh, custom i have one terrible one i'm going to, it's so very disheartening it's especially those people in the diaspora they want to send things to their family and friend in nigeria what they see is beyond what they can recount. They've been sending this to, in fact, my ears are full. Now, practical example. 
practical example i want you to listen very well because it can happen to any one of you and it can also happen to someone closer to you what do you do see number one advice tell everyone around you your children inclusive some of them will say no i'm not going to go to school i know i i don't i mean i'm a footballer i mean i want to go into music i want to go into entertainment tell them they need education at worst you should be able to read and write everything around me doesn't encourage me to go to school i went to my i went to a weekend degree in nigeria when i've I've eventually have married everything around me doesn't encourage me to go to school when I was still young my parents are not educated nobody will, even our environment was so poor that we don't see education as anything we didn't see edu education Ush. at at a GS, junior secondary school I couldn't even read I could not even speak. You can imagine how worst it was. The only, the little one I can be able to speak now is when I realized I needed to upgrade myself. So at the end of the day, I sent myself to that degree. You know, you can imagine when you now go to school, when you, after you've started working, you know, at the ministry, then what happened? Every other thing you do is, <laughs> you know, Nigeria stuff. Let me not go there. So encourage. Call is coming in. I will answer that person if you call. So you could hang just one minute. Now this issue. Now let me now go to how Nigerian security law enforcement. How law enforcement. How law enforcement. In, uh, incriminates or turns Nigeria um, citizen or youth into criminal. If you look at the average, then let's say six averagely, this is not a fact. I'm just telling you based on our experience. Seven, six or seven Nigerians will get arrested out of ten in Nigeria. Though, maybe only three or four will eventually end up in prison because of one thing or the other. Out of the four that end up in prison, maybe one or two are actually criminal. They actually did. Most of them, even if they perpetrate evil or crime, they will still walk on the streets without being prosecuted. Now, is it that you are being arrested while you are on the road or someone took your matter, go police, accuse you of one thing or the other? Now, practical example, let us use these guys. We have, let me show you their pictures. These are three guys I'm going to talk about right now. And then we are going to hear from them. We are going to hear from them. Uh, we are going to hear from them right now. Now, what happened? On the 5th July 2020, three of them, Paul, Farouk and Israel were invited by the Lagos State CIID Pantiyaba Lagos for questioning concerning a rape case. Now, they said the rape or defiled one lady. I won't give the full name of the lady. Let's say Easy. And Easy. What nobody reported, we yes, we love that people when they see things going on, they should report. So the main accused is Philip Okorosha, is at large right now. 
what we always encourage is that the police should do their investigation very well. You see, the position of the law is that they prefer the accused or corporates to go scot-free than to allow innocent to go to prison for something they don't know anything about. That is the position of the law. Because they see innocent going to as something that no must not be done. Innocent must not go to must not suffer. In America, if innocent is by any mistake went to be imprisoned, at the end of the day, they discover, they discover it was a mistake. The, the states will pay that person millions of dollars just to make sure they, they compensate the person. But in Nigeria, go to prison for 30 years, 100 years. When you, they allow you to go, you just allow or nothing. And that person, what will happen? That person, even if he was not a, a, a criminal before, will likely go back to crime because he needs to survive. Now, these three, uh, three people, uh, this uh, Philip Okorosha has been arrested, and the police invited every other boys living in that house for questioning. When they get to the police station, Pansy, they, they arrested them, and they asked them to pay 250,000 naira each. And then everything amounts to one million, including the uh, culprits, the accused. There were four. These three guys and the main accused, they asked them to go and bring 250,000 naira each, making one million. The moment that money is paid, they will release them to go. These people don't have that money. Their parents don't have that money. So what did they do? They send them to court. When they get to the court, now, I want you to learn this thing. This is an experience you won't hear from no one. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you, you will not hear from anywhere. This is practical. Now, this is a capital offense. This is a PI case. The law, the legal people will call it PI case. Majorly, it's not a bailable offense. Before you can, they can bail, but it has to go through some process. I may not tell you all the process right now. Now, magistrates' courts don't have jurisdiction to try a PI case. The reason is, any capital offense that will involve going to prison for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, or even condemn to death, they prefer to go through some, to be sure that these people, we don't want to condemn innocent people to prison. Go to condemn, you see innocent people that they've hanged and killed, innocent because of the act of the uh, law enforcement in Nigeria. But that is for another day. People die killing them because of the issue of Nigeria's situation. That is why that police issue is more, is more worse than to be talking about immigration and custom. Because if it involves immigration, it's just about losing money, losing your flight and stuff like that. But when it consigns the, um, the police, that is life-threatening cases. People in prison right now, in the four corners of prison, without being a criminal. Now, PI case. The system in Nigeria now creates, under Ministry of Justice, we have DPP, Director or director, Directorate of public prosecution. These departments, there are lawyers there. What do they do? They want to critically look at this case. 
they don't want to rely on what the police give to them to condemn people or to try them for capital offenses. What are capital offenses like armed robbery, um, murder cases, rape? These are capital offenses. Now they look into it, check the statement of the accused, check the statement of the um, to, uh, the, the complainant, the investigation, the P, uh, 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 IPO, and everything like that, that. They will now make their advice to the court. Oh, these people, they have case to answer. Oh, these ones are not, they are not criminal. Allow them to go. No, this one is, should not be tried for uh, capital offense. It should be tried for stealing. Or, you know, the, the small case and let them go. That is the, that is the work of DPP. Now, this case, mostly, mostly what is going on right now, right now I will tell you, there are some people that have been accused on capital fake cases that you will be, they will be in the prison for 10, 15 years without any trial. Why does it like that? I have a case like that. I have I've done so many cases, I've lost count. Now, what happened? Why would they now keep them in prison? For a long time without trial, police, what did they do? What they do is this. You see, when you go to a court, especially this is known to people that have pending cases right now in the court. Remember any time you go to court, they, 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 the magistrate will ask the IPO or the uh, prosecutor, what about these people's case? They will say, my lord, their case file is under duplication. They will adjourn the case. Next time, come again. My lord, the case file is under duplication. This case file will be under duplication for, and there's nothing the magistrate can do. There's nothing the DPP, Ministry of Justice, can do. There's nothing all of them can do. And then at the end of the day, the, the, the innocent or the accused will be in prison for like 10 years. With the same statement, their case file is under duplication. The, when I know about this, there is a case that involved. I just hearing the case file under duplication. When I think, when the case, you no, know, when the court rises, I went to the IPO. I said, "Give me, give me your IPO phone number." I went to the IPO in his office. I said, "How are you, sir? Fine. Please." What do you mean by case file under duplication? He said, uh, sir, the case file is with me. It's in that locker. I'm not going to use my, my salary to duplicate this case file. The P DPP that are supposed to work on this case, they don't have the case, they, they don't have the copy of the case file yet. I supposed to photocopy and give the court a, 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 um, their own copy and give the DPP their own copy. I said, is that all what is delaying these people for eight years? They said, yes. Do you expect me to use my salary to be duplicating case file? Oh my God. That's, that's what's keeping these people for eight years? They said, yes. analog versus digital these are not normally you put some documents on the or you know put just scan all this thing put it on the thing and send it you should know the file supposed to go through all this that is digital now we are still talking about analog photocopy going to the office and drop it I said, okay, I'm talking about a, a case of, uh, around 2007, 2006. Okay, I said, how much will it take you to now do this? He said, uh, uh, give me 20,000. 20,000 were like talking about 100,000 nowadays. I said, for what? He said, photocopy. Let me see the case file. He brought the case file out. The photocopy at that time is about 20 naira. 20 naira. Now, for transport, 
maybe I should give him like 50 naira to just buy gas. I said, okay, I'll give you 4,000 naira. I gave him 4,000 naira. I said, but one thing I want you to do for me, give me the file number of this case file where you duplicate it. The moment you are giving it to the DPP, give me the file number. You know why I ask? This is, you are learning, please. The reason I ask is this. At the DPP, police have done dumping, dumping of case file. And at the DPP, maybe they have some few lawyers to go through all this case file. And the case file is about thousands at the DPP. And if I allow him to just photocopy and drop, just drop at the DPP, this still will go back to maybe before the DPP will now get to that file, maybe we are talking another five years. So I said, give me the case file number. When he gave it to me, he duplicated it. Within just one day or two days, he duplicated it. I write, I wrote a letter to the DPP, informing them about this particular case file. And the DPP director brought immediately brought the case file because the letter shows the case file. They brought it out. I said, look into this and check. And they ended up saying, this, there's no case. This one doesn't have a case. This guy doesn't have a case. And this is a guy that has spent eight years in prison. I was crying. I was crying. You just go on the streets and pick people up. And hand end up sending them to prison. On what? On what? The implication is these people now, they, they are taken to the, to the court, to the prison. Imagine a prison that has criminals, real one, the one that have been arrested and condemned, the one that are arrested and condemned need people out there to work for them. Now, in the prison, you, criminal just need two people to sit down with and reorate him. At the end of the day, that person will turn to criminal within just 24 hours. Now, the criminal even doesn't need two days to train someone. Now, someone, someone will not end up one month, two months, three months. Before he comes out, he becomes a criminal. And this is the person that has spent so much on litigation. And when coming out, this is a person, nobody will say, okay, take your transport fare. Talk more of empowerment. So what are you now telling me? These people will go back to society, a trained criminal, even if he's not a criminal. And this is a person that have gone through litigation. He knows how, what to do to go scot free in litigation. You can now see how police turn people, youth, into criminal. Most of them will now go to, they just, they just dumping them, collect them from the society, dump them in the prison for some time. These people will come back criminal, learning the act of crime. And they will be using it. And then no police will arrest them, knowing fully that this person is, has been to the court prison. And he will continue. And now they will now see reason to become criminal. Because at this time, whatever things they do, they, they do it without with all judge, with all freedom, with all freedom that the police too will not be able to arrest them. And then the police, a moment they see that this one is a criminal, this one criminal. They don't want to waste their time on those people. And they will be looking for the innocent one, the one that is still fresh. And then they just go train them, go take them to the society. Train this one, take it to the society. Now we are having more people that have replaced prison than those ones that are just new and fresh. And what do you expect in the situation in a, in a, in a, in a country like that? What do you expect? A society that want to talk more about that it is the criminals that have the way that that knows all the things you are talking to say. Now let me let me let me conclude this case. These people now you can you can now see why they spend so much so much time in prison without being you know educated. These three people, 
these four people, including the accused, were sent to the court. Because of that was that was uh, 2020. 2020. They took them to now because of Corona. The prison says no, we don't want to bring new people into the prison. We don't want them, we don't know their status concerning COVID-19. Return these people to Panty. They return them to Panty before the next adjournment. The police were told the court that the main culprit escaped from their cell. The main culprit, which is Philip Okorosha, escaped. Remaining three people that just were, you know, living in that compound that they invited. And they said, go and bring all of you, go and bring 250,000 so that we can allow you to go. We know you, you've not committed any crime. Our suspect is this particular person. And now the suspect, the main suspect now got escaped. Remaining the three people in their, in their custody. And then the lawyers, sometimes, though the lawyers went to the court, law court to eat, but I appeal to lawyers, please, work with the work of God. Do your work with the sense of justification that you are a lawyer to also work as God sent. The lawyer know what to do, but the lawyer will continue to collect their their um, their uh, 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 legal face and appearance face. They know what to do, but they didn't do it. Every time the police tell the man at uh, the court, "Oh, sir, they are caught. They are case file is the prosecutor will tell the my, the court their case file is under duplication." That's the end. The lawyer will collect his own appearance fees until next adjournment. The parents were tired. The parents were tired of spending money. And then what happened? We, we just opened our office in Lagos. We don't have the money, but we look for money, you know, just to go to the here and tell us, our tell people about their appearance in Lagos. We now open office in Lagos. We try as much as possible to look for money to pay. 25,000 Naira every week. The money we didn't have. We did that and the parents had our program and said, these people who want to get to their office. Everybody said, oh, the same thing. They will collect money from you and nothing will happen. They say, even at that, let us visit them. They came to our office in Lagos and relate what happened. Oh, this is a this is an experience we know. I'm telling you the secret behind it. This is an experience we all know. So the moment they recount their ordeal, we know that this is just the same case that we'll be handling in other states. Immediately, Pralag International um gave you know, when the case like that happened, we just gave one of our members a pralegiat. So we took pralegiat, we gave the case to pralegiat for me. You handle this case. By the time she went and wrote letter to the DPP, DPP said, we don't know about this case. After about several months in prison, you don't know about this case. He said, I, we don't know about this case. Ah, the bottleneck, go out go forth from one to another, from court, where is the DPP, where is the letter, where is the case file, we wrote everything, we, we now send the, we got hold of the case file, we send it to the DPP, we wrote another letter, for court uh, advice, and DPP advice, the DPP advice came that these people has no case to answer, after several months in prison, after several months in prison. Now, when the case file is out, as an advice that these people don't have a case, for, a case to answer, it, it's not automatic that these people come out from prison. The court still have to read that to the, to the uh, accused on their next adjournment date. Now, we cannot do that all at home. 
we still have to allow the DPP to send the, uh, the court's advice, the, uh, the DPP advice to the courts directly, internally. Now, for the advice to even get to the court is another problem. It took us another several months. Something literally just push button and it's supposed to go to all the courts. It's not in this case, it's not it's no more a private case. Anything you get that gets to the court becomes a public case thing. Now it becomes problem. Who's going to sign the document? Who is going to send it to the court? How will they get to the court? When will they get to the court? And let me let me give you let me not give you too much things to crack. At the end of the day, the case we we assign deputy coordinator, Prala deputy coordinator, to make sure this case file will get to where it's supposed to. So a date of hearing was fixed on Friday, 7 January. Since that time, 2020 case, they now fixed the date of hearing at the court, Friday, 7 January, this 7th. And the, the throw of Paul, Farouk, and Israel was set free by the presiding magistrate based on the advice from the DPP after spending 19 months in at Kirikirim, Kirikirim maximum prison. This is a maximum prison. This is a prison, a correctional facility that is meant for capital offenses. And now someone who doesn't even know about the case just because of money spent 19 months in the maximum correctional center, Lagos State, without trial. They were allowed to go on the 7th of January, 2022, since 5th January, uh, July, 2020. Now, the implication is this. Number one, stigmatization. Stigmatization that, oh, it's, it's it's, because even police come to your house, people will say you are a criminal. They don't know that everybody that goes to prison is not a criminal. Now, stigmatization, only the parents will know that this person, these people are not really, they've not really, they didn't really commit the crime they are arrested for. Number two, connection. Definitely, they should not tell me they've not collected the, uh, contacts from the prison. They should not tell me one or two criminals has not come to them to tell them, come and join our gang. They should not tell me that some people have been telling them, oh, this, you make more money when you do something like this. Prior to going to prison, maybe they don't even have something they are doing to earn money. Now, connection in prison. Three, litigation, loss of money. If you want to recount how much their parents have spent already before our coming in, now, they should tell you, recount. It's because they are tired. That's why they start looking for opportunity before they get to Bralaj International. The last one, waste of time. They waste 18 months in prison. Prison is not here like your bedroom. In prison, just like that. So that's why we encourage people anytime. It's just unfortunate. Comrades, we are not enough in Nigeria. We need activists that will be on the ground. Each house is supposed to have somebody that will know their rights, that will know what is it to do when there is issue of litigation or basic knowledge of the law. That is what Pralag is out there teaching you step by step about the law. You don't have to engage a lawyer. There is no free lawyer anywhere. They went to the uh, law school to feed their family. So don't, not all of them would do pro bono, free legal service. Now, let's hear what one of them will say. Oh, I don't know why. Oh, I don't 
put away snow puppy. Okay. Um, so I'm trying for us to I'm trying to connect this The second person. The last person. I 
so they said they are happy but me i'm seeing the implication the implication now is how do we undo what they know already our organization is supposed to have halfway center is a rehabilitation center normally it would take us like five hundred thousand dollars to 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 build our first arch halfway center a rehabilitation center in nigeria we have the land we have about 10 acres of land already and we are going to with the little we have we want to start this year so but what i'm saying is there are things the nigerian um government supposed to do to prevent reoccurrence like this there are things we as people me and you supposed to do you should not wait until it it's late even when the police arrest you there are things you need to do there's things you need to know before the arrest there are things we need to learn even the police will tell you you have the right to remain silent everything you say might be taken against you in the court of law you don't understand that statement so it is about enlightenment it is not about i i went to these i i am a d i'm a i'm a phd holder i'm a degree master's degree holder no so at this stage let me round up all right so we will continue to do everything to make up the society uh, a, a better place once again my name is Kwame Pralijan Akumi Olayemi from Pralag International my phone number is this plus one eight six two three six seven four zero two four once again my phone number is play uh, uh, plus one eight six two three six seven four zero two four our offices, uh, okay, I can pin down my office on this side. Uh, you can contact me. When you contact me through WhatsApp, I'll give you uh, my office address. I, uh, some of our fr uh, members on this platform, too, can, re can, can uh, reply you with our uh, office's address. Thank you once again. I'm still going back to the immigration. I'm still there until... Until our immigrations all our law enforcement they do what they're supposed to do according to the act that set them up enough is enough bye bye from